Something I've been hyper-focused on for the past few years is money. Saving money, budgeting money, investing money, and increasing my overall income. But when it comes to money, there's several different money traps and money mistakes that I want you to avoid because I'll be the first to tell you, even though I was very careful with my money and even though I planned everything out as much as I possibly could when it came to my finances, I made several financial mistakes. And the thing is, the money mistakes that I'm about to share with you in this video, you might actually be making these mistakes right now without even realizing it because they're fairly subtle mistakes that you don't think about until later. So I'm going to share my money mistakes with you so you can learn from my mistakes so you don't have to make them yourself. What's up, man? My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal growth and personal finance so that you can continue to better yourself every single day and live life on your own terms. On this channel, I talk about personal finance. I talk about saving, budgeting. I talk about increasing your income, and I give my own personal stories within my life to serve as a motivation to you to keep on going and keep going after that life that you want and deserve. So let's get into the video. Just a quick disclaimer, I'm actually still in my 20s. I'm actually 25 right now, but we're going to go between the ages of 20 all the way to 25 because I have I've even recently made some money mistakes that I just want you to be aware of. So the first money mistake that I'm going to talk about is not educating myself about finances earlier. When I was in school, I knew that the end goal was to graduate and not have to ever move back in with mom and dad. And so when I came up with that goal, I knew that I had to be financially independent and I knew I had to 100% be able to sustain myself within my finances and not have to rely on them for a single cent. And so, you know, I got closer and closer to that goal day by day and I started getting job offers and I chose the highest paying job offer because I knew that I wouldn't have to rely on them based off of the fact that this is the highest paying job offer, right? And so when I did that, I didn't do any kind of planning. I didn't do any kind of financial education. I didn't look into really anything. And I was fairly ignorant when it came to money. All I knew was to be careful with money. All I knew was to save as much as I possibly could, but I didn't know a lot of things about money. I didn't educate myself on taxes. And guess what? That cost me during tax season. I didn't know the first thing about budgeting, tracking my expenses. I didn't know the first thing about high yield savings accounts. I didn't know about the health savings accounts that they have with work. I didn't know about any of that stuff. And most importantly, I didn't know and understand the importance of living a frugal lifestyle, which is basically just living below your means. Instead of being proactive, I had to be completely reactive and teach myself all these things in the middle of taking on a new full-time job with a new role that I've never had before, being in a place that I've really never been before, and being in a city that I've never been before, and just moving out on my own and really just taking that whole experience in in addition to learning about personal finance and learning every little thing about that that can be stressful to anybody so that definitely led to to more stress on me during that time. Money mistake number two, renting a townhouse instead of a single bedroom apartment. So when I was 20 years old, I had this internship right before I got hired on full time for a job, right? And, and I was in this really nice neighborhood and there were a mixture of apartments and townhouses within the neighborhood. So I used to go for walks and runs around the neighborhood and I would just see the nicer, bigger townhouses. And I was like, man, I was like in awe because you know I was only used to that single bedroom apartment life that when I walked and saw some of the really nice townhouses, I was like, man, I've got to see these types of things. So I got with the property managers and got them to take me on a tour around these these big brand new townhouses, right? And I've always been obsessed with like the interior design of buildings and houses and stuff. So I was just intrigued and I just wanted to take a look at first. But when I took a look within them, I fell in love with them. And I was like, you know what? When I graduate and get my full-time job, I'm going to live in one of these. Some people overheard me say that and they laughed. And so me being me, when I graduated and I got the full-time job, I was like, you know what I'm going for? That townhouse. And here's the big reason why this was a financial mistake. For one, it was 1,182 square foot townhouse for just me. Literally, I didn't have any roommates or anything like that. It was just me. There were two bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms. And a big thing is I did not use all that extra space that I had. So I really wasn't getting my money's worth out of it. Just to put it into perspective, I turned the second bedroom into an office for me to do work at. And guess what? Even with that being said, there were sometimes days and even weeks that I would not go into that room. So I didn't use up the space like I should have. Plus, I could have just easily gotten a single bedroom apartment for at least $120 less each month. You know what I'm saying? And I would have used up all that space because it's just a single bedroom. But no, I just had to go with the townhouse. And it's, it's because of a few things. It's because I wanted it. I felt like I had the money for it. I felt like I deserved it. And it was something that I fell in love with once I did the tour. 
plus all the people who were laughing at the very idea of me moving into a townhouse after graduating, well, you know, I did, so I, they weren't laughing anymore. And, you know, those types of things, that's, that's a personal flaw of mine. You know what I'm saying? That I've corrected over the years. And I would highly encourage that you don't think the way I think because, you know, now I'm in the mindset of who cares what people think? They can laugh all they want. So I'm going to do what I do based off of what's best for my future. At that time, living in a townhouse was not what was best for my future. It didn't destroy my finances, but it did set me back. And the, the crazy and scary thing about this is it set me back financially without me really even realizing it. You might have these really ambitious goals and just know that people are going to criticize you and you can't let your ego and your pride get in the way of what's best for your financial future. Because that's that's what I was doing. You know, you, you might have really ambitious goals. You might want to buy yourself your dream car like a BMW or something. Or you might want to buy your first house well before you even turn 25. And to a lot of people, these are overly ambitious goals because they themselves did not achieve these goals when they were of that age. So they feel like you can't do it. But guess what? You can't let your pride and your ego feed into that negativity. You have to do what's best for you so that you can reach those goals when you hit that age. You know what I'm saying? So that's something that I wish I would have told myself back then, but I'm telling you so you don't have to go through that thought process like I did. I'm going to tell you this, man. This is a financial mistake that a lot of people just really don't even think about, but I I made this financial mistake for at least three months until I woke myself up. So basically what I did was I was prioritizing debt over saving my money. And what I mean by that is I was purely just neglecting putting money into my savings and every bit of money that I had that would have normally gone toward my savings, it went straight towards my student loans. I had a good $30,000 that I owed in student loans. In the moment it was time for me to start paying off my student loans, I just started throwing thousands and thousands of dollars at it without any regard for my savings account. You know, this was happening when I was on my journey of teaching myself all of these personal finance principles like getting out of debt, budgeting money, saving money and all this stuff. And I started following Dave Ramsey and, and Rachel Cruz and something that they're really big on and something they push a lot is getting out of debt. And what they recommend is that you save $1,000 first within your savings account and then pretty much forget about it. And in addition to that, you're just throwing all of your money, pretty much most of your money into your debt and you can stack up your savings later. And that's pretty much the mindset mindset behind what their strategy is. And at the time I really wasn't really heavily into finances so I didn't really know much about, you know, applying what I learned to my specific situation. I didn't know about any of that, so I just started throwing thousands of thousands of dollars into my student loan. And while Dave Ramsey and Rachel Cruz are very financially successful, I highly disagree with that method of, you know, save $1,000 and then go ahead and put pretty much the rest of your money into your student loans. I disagree with that because emergencies cost way more than $1,000. And one day it came to me looking at my at my savings account with barely over $1,000 in it. And then I looked at my student loans and there were, you know, there was a good $10,000 already paid off. So I was like, huh, why am I doing this? I really had to start thinking about it for myself. You know what I mean? But you know, bro, the thing about life is anything can happen at any given time. It's totally unfair and it's totally unpredictable. So it's best to have that money already set aside within your savings account within an emergency fund so you don't have to get ready. That's why, where that old saying comes from. You've got to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And you know, I say that because at that moment when I was comparing the two, I was comparing my savings account with the amount of student loans that I had paid off. I was just looking at them and I was like, man. I just started to play with scenarios in my head and I was like, man, what if I pay all these student loans off, but then I lose my job and I only got a thousand dollars in my savings account? How am I supposed to sustain life? Like rent is most of that a thousand dollars. So what am I supposed to do then? I thought about, you know, what if I have a medical emergency? I thought about what if I get in a car accident and I have to pay for those damages? What if I have to get surgery? What if what if my company goes out of business? Like I was thinking of all of these things because here I was throwing all my money at debt, but then you know my biggest fear became, okay, what if I pay off all my debt but I have absolutely nothing to show for it? Look, man, I'm not gonna lie. This is actually my favorite money mistake that I've ever made, and this because I am extremely proud of it. I know that sounds really weird, but I'm very proud of this money mistake, and that is investing 
too early. So when you think about investing, you're probably thinking of stocks, bonds, cryptocurrencies, and stuff like that. But I'm not talking about that stuff. That's not what I invested in because I didn't understand enough about those when I first got started. So I didn't even touch those with my money. Instead, I invested in a business. But before I get there, I just want to paint a quick picture for you. So when I was in the middle of doing the budgeting and the saving and penny pinching and everything under the sun to save me some money, I, I, I you know, I kept coming to the conclusion and I kept getting hit over the head over and over and over again. Hey, man. This ain't how you're going to get wealthy. You don't get wealthy by waiting for, you know, every two weeks to go by to get a paycheck and then put away a small percentage of it. That's not how you get wealthy. That's 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 slow. That's a slow way to build any kind of wealth, especially when you consider the amount of years that it'll take to even build a considerable amount of money with that. And even that is just a fraction of what you're actually making. And so I quickly came to the conclusion, you know what? If I want to be wealthy, I'm going to have to increase my income. And guess what? My way of increasing my income was investing in a business. Bro, when I tell you I put some money into investing, I put some serious money into investing. Like I was spending a minimum of $600 every single month with absolutely no return whatsoever. And I did that for like a whole year straight. And what made this a financial mistake was the fact that I broke the number one rule of investing. I invested in something that I did not fully understand. So what I invested my money into was an MLM. And if you don't know what an MLM is, it's a multi-level marketing business. Now, a multi-level marketing business is basically a business that sells products through people, right? So you sell products and that's how you make your money. But you also recruit people to sell said products. And then when they make sales, you make a commission. And then they recruit people, they make sales, they make a commission, you make a commission. And it's a collateral effect until you get to a point where you make a ton of money off of them. And that's what would happen in an ideal world. Now, this is nothing against any MLM, but frankly, I just didn't know enough about it to be spending that much money on the products every single month. That was that was the exact number that I was spending on products every single month at the minimum. And frankly, I, I don't agree with the business structure of an MLM because to me, it's not really your own. It's it's not your idea. It's not your product. You didn't create the product. You're selling someone else's product and it relies on you recruiting other people. And you know, for me, me personally, that's just not for me. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with MLM. It just is, I don't rock with it. You know what I'm saying? That's, it, it doesn't fit me. It's not within my personality or, or within my goals to do such a thing. But at the time I didn't know I really didn't know much of anything, so I had to fail a little bit to understand what I was getting myself into. But that was a valuable lesson, and I, I, I learned so much from it. And, you know, the people that I was around, I, I loved them so much because, like, you know, the people I was surrounded around, they were positive influence within my life, and they had very good core values and principles, and I learned very good lessons about leadership, about financial management, and just about business and running a business and what it takes to be successful in business, period, that I still apply to my life today, and guess what? It's been nothing but valuable to my life, so that's why it's my favorite financial mistake that I made, but I didn't spend money on something that I understood. And if it were anything else, it could have really backfired. And not only could I have been spending $600 a month, but I might not have been getting that value that I was getting out of this. So here's something that several people do of any age, and it's really a financial mistake. And, it, and what that is, is it's overpaying for something that you can either do yourself or make yourself. And just to give some examples, you know, I'm, I'm big on haircuts and appearances and I used to go out and, and get haircuts every other week. And if you wanted them to, usually I have facial hair, I recently shaved, but like usually when I'm wearing like a beard or a goatee or whatever, I would get the barber to line it up and that would be like an extra $5 on top of a $20 haircut. And depending on where you went, it might be an extra $8. And you know, those are things that you can learn how to do on your own. And so when we had this quarantine go on, I took full advantage of it. And what I did was I, I ordered my own clippers, I ordered my own outliner, and I ordered, you know, some facial hair trimmers so that I could do that stuff myself. And it wasn't perfect at first, but you know, once you practice and once you learn the method behind it, you can do that yourself. And you know, now you might spend a few hundred dollars on the equipment, but now you, you're you saving hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. I'm saving hundreds of dollars every single year based off of just that. I would usually spend $480 a year. Now it's going to be $0 a year. 
and the the barbershop equipment costing me under that so i know i'm saving that money but that was that was a money mistake you, you don't even realize you're making it probably but when you go to the barbershop if you can do it yourself and it saves you time and you can really give yourself a simple haircut like me I'm, I'm good with this haircut that i have right now i don't really need anything fancy i can still look good and presentable with the way my hair is cut now and the thing is i can do this myself and i have been doing it myself so that's just one example another example is water bottles you know you can you can pour water into a brita filter at your house and it'll be some clean cold water that tastes in my opinion just as good as bottled water that you get at the store so that's overpaying for water and it's not like a huge financial impact but you know the little things that you do that might seem insignificant can add up over time so over the years that money that you're spending on all those bottled water that you could have been getting for free this whole time because water's everywhere pretty much and it's free another example is i used to spend a lot of money on protein shakes I used to spend like ridiculous, like six to eight dollars per protein shake at a time. And, you know, it's a lot cheaper if you just make it yourself. You could just get a big tub of protein for like 40 bucks with 48 to 50 scoops within it. And, you know, if you only use one to two scoops per each time you make a protein shake, I mean, I don't have to do the math for you. You can you can literally see, hey, I'm saving some money on it, especially if you drink a protein shake every single day. Oh, yeah. You're going to be saving all kinds of money. And just to put it into perspective, you have 50 scoops worth of protein in a tub of in a big tub of protein. And let's say you use two scoops each time you have a shake. Guess what? That's 25 shakes for two dollars a pop versus six to eight dollars a pop. You see what I'm saying? That's a drastic difference. And that leads me to my next point, something else I used to do a lot, and I actually still struggle with this. So like I said, this money mistakes is going to go from my age of being 20 all the way up until now, which I'm 25 now. This is something that I still struggle with, but I've recently gotten a lot better with this. It's, it's eating out too much, man. I hate cooking, you know, and it's, it's something that I'm trying to get better with making the habit of doing so I don't have to react and go out and and go to my nearest fast food restaurant, which for me is Chick-fil-A, and I love Chick-fil-A, and everybody over there knows who I am, which is a big sign that I need to change my ways, you know what I'm saying, but that's something that is that is currently one of my vices, like I I love food, and I love convenience, and those are those are things that I'm trying to separate myself away from, and so recently I've just, I've been cooking at home, but that's that's really a huge financial mistake. And that's something that you may not even necessarily realize that you're doing because you're a busy person, you've got school, you've got work, you've got to hang out with your friends, you've got to have a life, right? You got to play video games here and there. You might have a project that you're working on. And it's just so much more convenient to go out and get a quick meal that costs, you know, five to six dollars, you know, and you feel like it's not going to hurt you because, hey, it's just five dollars, just five dollars. And, you know, that little bit of money that you spend on a regular basis that seems so insignificant to you it actually adds up to be a lot that could have been in your pockets at the end of the day so that's just the only thing that i want to kind of put into perspective for you because again it's something that i struggle with too but you know i try my best to control that and only limit myself to like once a week if at all for fast food here's another one you probably haven't thought about but i am 100 percent guilty of this it's not taking advantage of the fact that i have health insurance and dental insurance you know um sometimes i get so caught up in what i'm doing i get so busy and you know making content as well as going to work and you know putting my all in both making content and both you know being at work and everything and when you do that you kind of lose sight of what's important and what's important is your health and you know when you neglect to go to the doctor for a checkup or you neglect to go to the dentist you know just to get a regular cleaning you are not taking full advantage of your health and dental insurance because you're you're paying for coverage like that is coming out of your paycheck for the company to cover a certain percentage of, you know, what your bill is going to be at the end of the day. And if you never go, you're just literally spending money on that. Like, sure, you're going to be covered for insurance if something crazy happens to you, but you're not taking full advantage of it. And that's a financial mistake because how much money are you spending every single month for these benefits that you're not using? You know what I'm saying? That's the conversation that I had to have with myself because that's something that I got slack on. And I had to get it right. So another financial mistake, once again, another thing I disagree with when it comes to Dave Ramsey is 
credit cards are bad. And because he kept saying it over and over and over again, and it got embedded into my head, I was like, you know what? Credit cards are bad. So it just, it led to me not even using my credit card whatsoever. Like it was just a pointless deal for me to use them in my head because I felt like I could have just spent my money. If, if I'm using my credit card, I obviously don't have the money to do it. And I just got in the wrong mindset about credit cards and I wasn't able to take advantages of getting points or, you know, cash back options because I got into a mindset of I'm not going to use my credit card. Credit cards are useless. Why are we using credit cards? They're stupid. You know what I mean? That's the stuff that Dave Ramsey says. And, you know, when you listen to somebody, you're influenced by it for a while. It kind of registers into your head to the point where you're like, you know what? He's right, but no, I, I totally disagree with that. Credit cards, I mean, as you know, I have a credit card video. Go check it out. But I, I talk about how you can actually use credit cards for your advantage. And, and, you know, building credit is really, really, really important. It's extremely important to build your credit and become a trusted individual and be seen as somebody who is reliable. It's, it's how you get your own place to stay. You know, they, they run your credit. Whenever you want to get a car, they run your credit. Whenever you want to buy a house, they run your credit. So it's really beneficial for you to do that. And again, I have a video on how to build your credit fast and you know, you can check it out right up here. You can go watch it right after this video. But I want you to know this, where I was when I was that age, when I was 20, 21, 22 years old, I was making these decisions, right? And you know, at the time I was pretty well off financially, especially to be as young as I was. So I didn't see a problem with making a lot of these decisions, but looking at where I was from where I stand today. Now I look at my old self and I'm like, no, you shouldn't have done that. And it's and it's that thought process right there. It's I'm always continuously improving myself, improving the way that I think, improving the way that I think about finances, because if I don't, that's how I can get stagnant and that's how you could get stagnant. So I hope you take this video in and look at this like, wow, even though you might have some good money put away in your savings account, you might be making good money. You know, you might have a plan for your future, but always think about what could I be doing better? That was the basis of, of how I made this entire video. Like, what could I have done better all of those years ago? And I had to really think deep. And those were the mistakes that not a lot of people really think about. But it's something that once you think about them, now you can add some value to somebody else. And, and that's what I'm doing with you right now watching this video. I'm taking all of my mistakes that I made in my early 20s that I didn't even realize that I was making and I'm putting them right in front of you. And you can you can even assess yourself, am I making these mistakes right now? You might be, you might not be. If you're not freaking awesome, man, keep doing what you're doing and just learn from everything that you do. But anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal growth and personal finance so that you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Stay cold.